In the next couple minutes, we're going to walk through an example 3 a.m. troubleshooting process for an on-call engineer. We're going to go step by step from an alert on a service level objective, explore our metrics to help diagnose the problem, look at traces to identify the services being impacted, and finally, look at our logs to confirm the root cause and remediation. Sumo Logic centralizes information regardless of data stream, so users can focus more on finding and debugging issues rather than translating between logs, metrics, and traces. In this live demo, I'm the on-call engineer for a banking application that runs on Kubernetes and AWS. We've got a payment service that talks to an account service and talks to an RDS database. These services are all mission critical and run at all of our banking locations. It's around 3 a.m. when I see alert emails from Sumo Logic notifying me of an issue with our banking application. Looking at the email, I can see we have an elevated error rate and our service level objective has been breached. Clicking on the link, I land right into Sumo Logic, centered around the SLO violations in the right time frame. In the dashboard, I can see the error rate history and also some automatically computed outliers, helping me get quick context on the issue. Outliers help me to better understand when the situation started getting out of hand relative to the baseline. One of the most critical elements in any outage is being able to identify who's affected. We can right away see the affected customers, reach out to our customer support team, and better support them. Further, we need to understand how this impacts our own business so we can measure in terms of transaction volume and dollars transferred for our banking application to see how impactful this is and measure the severity of the issue. In order to troubleshoot the SLO, we need to be able to see where those failures are coming from and which subcomponents are contributing to those elevated error rates. We've broken the error rate down by payment service pod. We can see a few red pods that look like they're in distress. We can click on the pod to view a summary including CPU and memory and link to the deployment it's a part of. Thanks to Sumo Logic's entity model, we can very quickly get an overview of this pod and link directly to logs, metrics, and traces. Because we're seeing this problem across many pods, it's probably a consistent problem across the deployment. Let me drill down to a more detailed view for this whole deployment. The entity hierarchy on the left shows us that the deployment is part of the mobile banking production Kubernetes cluster and lives in the mobile banking namespace. The connection refuse errors indicate that we're seeing an issue between the two services trying to connect and being refused. Tracing is going to be the best tool to show the relationship between calls and their timings. Let's dive into traces and get a better understanding of what's happening to the transaction between payment service and the account service. Now we're viewing all of the transaction traces filtered to the account service that's refusing our connection. Let's add another filter for errors. Traces are made up of spans representing requests, queries, or any part of an application's code. Sumo Logic combines traces into an end-to-end -end flow of your entire application. Here we see all of the spans that are part of the payment service and account service. I can see a Git call from the payment service to the account service and the errors along each one of these spans. We follow the errors and we see the errors leading up to this last span in the transaction. Let's select the last span and investigate the logs related to this part of the trace. Browse to the Infrastructure tab on the right and find the specific container we're looking for. And under the Troubleshooting links, click on the raw logs. We're in the logs now and we see almost immediately we're running out of connections. The neatly parsed logs show the root cause is too many connections. Sumo automatically extracts the schema from any type of log, so you don't waste any time creating pre-parsing pipelines. Let's use Sumo's log reduce function to simplify thousands of logs by matching patterns. With log reduce, we can see the same error is happening frequently. This is our smoking gun and confirms that yes, our RDS instance is overwhelmed with too many connections, more than it can handle. As the on-call engineer, my first priority is to restore the application. Let's get the customers working and go back to investigate how to fix the root cause. To remediate the issue, I can increase the memory allocation and the max connections allowed for RDS. Now that that's done, let's go back and validate the root cause and find out why we're running out of connections. To do this, let's use Sumo Logic's Root Cause Explorer and confirm that this spike is connected with the increased load. Root Cause Explorer makes it easy to visualize events of interest across your services to quickly deduce the root cause. This feature is a part of Sumo Logic's AWS Observability Solution, which utilizes data from a combination of EC2 host metrics, CloudWatch logs and metrics, and CloudTrail logs. We can see in the Root Cause Explorer several anomalies clumped together related to MySQL connections, IOPS, and disk usage. The rise in load suggests that slow queries might be a factor here. In order to confirm our hypothesis, let's check the MySQL slow query logs. 
we're able to see that we did have some queries taking excessively long during this outage. We can take these queries back to the application team and ask them to either optimize the queries or help us optimize the tables so we can be more efficient. In order to be more proactive towards this issue going forward, we can generate a log-based alert that looks at the transaction time and uses Sumo Logic's predict capability to forecast when we will be within 24 hours of violating this long query limit and recreating this outage scenario. In this demo, we've gone from an alert to a remedial cause to a deeper root cause. We've been able to do it simply by following the signal through and through across logs, metrics, and traces. When you've got a true observability platform that can stitch the data back to the entities they come from and highlight unknown unknowns, the platform gets to do the heavy lifting and you get to focus on solving your problems.